Hi, this is Blackfish Dude here, and I'm here to tell you something awesome, and that is that 50 of you have subscribed to this channel. And to celebrate that, I'm going to give you a tour of my chemistry lab. I'm going to start with my work table. And this work table is where I do all my work, pretty much, uh, and like mixing things that don't require anything dangerous like fumes or flames. Um, if I were to do that, I'd do it over in the fume hood, which I'll go over later on. Now, as you can see, I have a bunch of stuff on the table right now. I am currently doing copper sulfate crystals. So I have the solution here, uh, seed crystals, more seed crystals. Um, here's the finished product. And I have an arm air flask and a funnel to filter it out. And I have a filter stand and a base. Now I also have a numerous wash bottles. This one contains acetone. Uh, this one contains isopropanol, alcohol, and this one contains water. Uh, I also have a bunch of waste disposal containers. This one is for general waste. This one I can just pour down the drain. This one's for acids. This I neutralize before pouring down the drain. This one's for alkalines. I also neutralize with an acid before pouring down the drain. This one's for permanganate waste, which I neutralize with hydrogen peroxide and sodium carbonate before I pour down the drain. And this is solvent waste. And solvent waste I take to a special place to get disposed of, so it doesn't harm the environment. Um, I also have ferric chloride waste, but that's for um, circuit board etching. And it's, I don't plan to dispose of it anytime soon. Now, going past my workbench, um, here is my drying rack. And my drying rack um, I made, and they're basically just wooden poles mounted at an angle to <coughs> a wooden board. And what I do is I put flax on here to dry, like this. It gets enough air, it drains out. This is what a, usually a professional lab is like, except it's not with wood, it's with plastic. Um, Moving over here, we have basically my general storage area. This this area here is for drying. Basically, anything that doesn't fit on the drying rack, like this petri dish or this buchaner funnel, um, I would put on here to dry. Um, these are my serological pipettes or general glass pipettes. Um, they are on all different sizes. Uh, these are my disposable serological pipettes. Um, they they come in one size. They're polystyrene. Uh, here is my containers collection. They range from an empty wash bottle to a bunch of used syringes, but they're not like used medically. I just used them for once. I don't want to throw them away. And here are some needles, syringes with needles. Don't worry, they're not like sharp needles. Uh, these are actually blunt needles. And uh, sorry, this is not in focus. But they use for dispensing and pretty much nothing else. Um, here is one of my failed attempts to make an ampule. As you can see, I've sealed off the end here, but I have not sealed off this end. It didn't work. Here are my bottles. These are Boston Round bottles or amber bottles, whatever you want to call them. And these are for storing acids and strong chemicals. Um, these are actually my old saline wash bottles for my contact lenses, but I found that they were made of PETE, so they're suitable for chemistry. Uh, these are basically Chinese takeout containers. They're very good. They're um, polypropylene, so they all work. I store a lot of chemicals in them, as you will see. Here are my burners. Uh, I don't use burners a lot because I have a hot plate stirrer, but they're nice to have around. Um, up here, that's a bunch of cloths, uh, borax. Uh, here is my thermos, in case I need to store the liquid nitrogen. Uh, this is lubricant. I don't know why I need lubricant. Um, and here are a bunch of new syringes, just in case. And up here is pretty much useless stuff. Um, going over here, I have my water dispenser. Of course, it says do not drink, but... It basically has water in it. Surprising, isn't it? Um, over here is my fume hood. 
And this fume hood I built completely from scratch. And it's basically made out of uh, drywall in here and a wooden frame and um, about one centimeter, uh, centimeter thick ballistic glass. This ballistic glass is pretty much explosion proof, but it's not mounted properly so it still wouldn't sustain an explosion. Over here I have my custom made, well I made it myself, uh, floating sash. So in professional labs you'd see a sash that goes up and down like this. And they have it so it's counterweighted in the back and everything. And I couldn't do that because I didn't have space back there. So basically I used a system of pulleys like over here. You can trace this neon wire here. And you can see that it leads down here. This is my counterweight. This weighs exactly as much as that pane of ballistic glass. And this this makes it so sliding this up and down it stays there. Normally, if I were to slice this up and down without the counterweight, it would just slam down on my fingers. And that is not preferable. So with this counterweight and a little bit of friction, I've gotten it so this uh, sash slides up and down. Now inside the fume hood, I have um, sort of a plastic floor, it looks like tile. And I have an actual tile that I can throw out or clean so I don't have to take the whole fume hood apart. Um, up here I have a light. This light is a very powerful LED light that is touch activated, so I can click on it and it turns off. And I've used a bathroom fan for the actual exhaust and it's very useful, it's 25 cubic feet per minute. And normally I have a, basically a charcoal filter in here that absorbs all the um, harmful chemicals and then I'll pipe this out here and as you can see the window is closed right now but if you look down there, you can see that the pipe actually leads out, and when the window's open, it has a clear path outside. So this, whatever I want to do inside here that involves smoke or poisonous vapors, I can basically lower it down so the air is being sucked from here up, up into this vent, as you can see up there, and out. So there's always a negative pressure in here. And so I've put these switch boxes, this is the fan switch, if I turn it on, you can hear the fan running. I also have an outlet switch, which is basically a safety thing. I have an outlet back there when I use my hot plate stirrers, and just in case I have um, any accidents or explosions or any sort of electrical fire, I can quickly turn off the outlet switch here instead of reaching in to turn it off there. And everything here is regulated by a power bar, just in case. And, of course, in every lab, there has to be a safety feature. And the safety feature here is the fire extinguisher. I have two of them. One over here, and one over here. And they make sure that if there's ever a fire, I'm protected. Okay, moving over here is my general storage area. I have, this is my glassware and labware the cabinet I also made and it, this thing says Earl Mayer flasks and it's true uh, I'm missing a lot of them right now because they're up drying but there's general I have a filtering flask which I'll show you right here and I take a vacuum line at this thing and it basically sucks air down to the Buchner funnel this is the Buchner funnel it's also drying and basically sucks the filtrate back in. So that's very useful if you have a very slow filtrate. Here's some more of my Erlenmeyer flasks. Here's a small beaker. Here's a large beaker. Um, down here is all of my mis uh, miscellaneous items. So I have a separatory funnel. Very useful if you want to separate things. Um, I have a bunch of tongs. Um, I have scupulas and a giant burette, which is very long. That is used for titrations. I have a thermometer, which is in here, mortar and pestle, bunch of funnels, uh, graduated cylinders, that's very important, and I have one crucible. Um, and a lot of other stuff that I don't use much. So going on to the next section of the cabinet, it says speakers. Gee, I wonder what's inside here. Um, oh, wow, it's speakers, I didn't know that. So. I have a lot of beakers, 
it's from very small, so I have a 30 milliliter to a one liter beaker. And that's all I need, like, they, they sell two liter beakers, but I don't really need that. And I have a lot of them. I sometimes break them because of heat shock, so it's nice to have a few. And down here is where everybody says that uh, everybody gives me questions. <laughs> no, they're not bongs. They are round bottom flasks. Um, these are used when you want to heat things using a heating mantle. Um, or more traditionally, if I can get this to stand, this is called a triple, tri triple neck flask. And as you can see, there's something special about here. And this is because these, um, the whitish parts have been sandblasted in, in, in a way, and it's like this over, like the, uh, here as well, in a way that they fit each other universally. And I'll show you, um, a kit with that later. Um, I have a bunch of different sizes from a very large one in the back, I'm not sure if you can see it, and triple necked, and also some flat bottom or Florence flasks, so they look kind of like it, but they're flat bottom so they don't have to roll around. I also have a few test tubes I don't use a lot, um, a few heating materials, a bucket, and, um, stoppers. Um... Uh, down here, here's another thing. I was talking about the vacuum filtration with the Buchner funnel. This is a vacuum pump. I uh, bought it at Harbor Freight. It's $99. It's, it's a pretty good vacuum pump. It sucks down to, I think, 2.7 microns. So it's pretty good. Um, this one is labware. Basically, it's labware. I have gloves. I have the second stand over here. I have a scale and I have my hot plate stirred. Very, very useful this thing is. It heats and it stirs using magnetic action. Uh, oh, and I forgot to mention, I have a bunch of clamps here too. So, this is for general purpose clamping. This is for barrette clamping. And over there I showed you I had a funnel clamp. Okay, so I move on to general chemical storage. There's a lot of stuff in here, I won't go over everything. But as you can see, I use a lot of the Chinese takeout containers. They're very, very good. They're chemically resistant. I bet I could store sulfuric acid in them without any problems. Basically, here are all my harmless chemicals, um, including copper sulfate, ammonium bicarbonate, sucrose, or sugar. Um, and I also store vials here, empty vials, filled vials, um, silicon dioxide. Uh, down here, I also store other chemicals like potassium iodide, uh, sulfur, all of this doesn't, isn't necessarily healthy for you, but they're definitely not harmful as you will see in the other ones. Um, here we have, in this cabinet, it's labeled bases. So anything alkalinic is in here, including sodium hydroxide, sodium carbonate. Um, I also have uh, 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide for titrations. Uh, back there you can see ammonia hydroxide, and a giant bag of baking soda. Um, and down here is oxidizers. So anything from oxidizers can't touch fuel. So I and um, I made sure that this is separated from everything else, as you can see with the walls. Uh, in here, I have concentrated hydrogen peroxide, uh, potassium permanganate, a lot of it back there. You can see potassium permanganate, uh, ammonium nitrate, magnesium dioxide, potassium chlorate, potassium nitrate, and silver nitrate. Uh, and a lot of the general store grade um, hydrogen peroxide is back there. Okay, so we move down to a cabinet called solvents. And, gee, I wonder what the solvent is. Well, they're basically anything flammable. And I have a lot of things in here. Basically, I store uh, a lot of solvents in something called oil jars. These used to ho uh, held... Um, canola oil. And now they hold acetone and methyl ethyl ketone. And now I move over here to these smaller bottles. Here are ethyl acetate, isopropanol alcohol, ethyl alcohol, and a little bit more of methyl ethyl ketone. I'm not sure why I have them in two separate containers. Um, the ethyl alcohol here, I've never been able to acquire any pure ethyl alcohol for obvious reasons. But uh, because, you know, people drink it, and that's bad. Uh, back here I have some benzomatic refills, which is butane, and a bunch, you can see a lot of bottles back there. Those are store-grade isopropanol, so they're not 99%.
I also have a little bottle of xylene, and never been able to use that much, but it's useful to have. I also um, had one bromo, no, this is a very hard name to pronounce, but it's one bromo aphthalene, and it's used in some kind of microscope, microscopes or something. But I found this in a trash can of a lab, and they said I could have it, so don't know what this is for. Now let's move on to acids. Our favorite can our favorite cabinet. This stuff I'm not gonna point out because a lot of this stuff actually has toxic residue on them. But I have hydrochloric acid, technical grade, or as they call it muriatic acid. It comes from the container in the back with a blue cap and a blue label. I also made my own nitric acid and I have sodium bisulfate and our favorite sulfuric acid. Uh, very, very dangerous. This can etch your skin off in matters of seconds. I also have normal, well this is very concentrated. I got this in our local Chinese supermarket. This is very concentrated, 25% acetic acid. Down here in the bag, I have glacial acetic acid. I don't know what to do with it yet. I also have some um, ferric chloride that I didn't use, and I have vinegar. So these are pretty much all my chemicals. Um, there's not much left in my lab. I have a very important filing cabinet that stores everything, every paperwork, MSDSs. Over here I have all my safety equipment. Up here I hold a lot of extra things. And over here is my whiteboard, so I make a lot of calculations. I did a lot of titrations with here, over here. Here's my tripod I used to film a lot of these videos. And here are all my pipes and pumps and uh, adapters so if I can do a stage of distillation. And furthermore, I need to show you guys what I meant uh, a couple minutes ago, what I said fritted glass. This kit uses 2440 distillation joints and you can see, you, you can see the uh, sandblasted again. But now I'll show you what they actually mean when they do this. It's not just a fashion statement or anything. You can see there's another joint with sandblasted things. This now is a male joint. This is a female joint. If you slide them in, they fit perfectly. And this is almost airtight. You can seal them with grease to make them more airtight for vacuum distillations. But this is how you get a perfect uh, nestling of these two uh, joints. And this is used in a lot of organic chemistry. This kit is made out of entirely of glass. And so they found a way to make glass um, nestle up with glass without it basically cracking each other or making an incorrect fit. Um, lastly, I have a safety kit. This safety kit contains a lot of the stuff I need in case there's an accident. And now I've pretty much showed you the entire lab. So thank you again for 50 subscribers, and I'll see you in the next video.